In terms of your contingency planning, then, you have to plan both for the event of no deal, but also for potential gaps between the transition and security treaty being in place and, and so on. So how, what's your assessment of how long it would take, or what's the Home Office's assessment of how long it would take to get a security treaty from date of agreement with the Commission through whatever ratification processes it needs, whatever subsequent domestic legislation processes it would need, and to implementation? Um, I think, not to be not, not to be obtuse, but I think it depends on the terms of that agreement. Um, if the agreement were a relatively straightforward arrangement whereby we would continue to be participate directly in the measures as they're currently constructed, then that would be relatively straightforward in implementation terms. Yeah. Um, the extent to which an agreement diverges from that would be likely to produce longer lead times in terms of implementation. But just in terms of then the, the, the process, the legal process, and what timescales and delays that you need to build into the process, how long would it need? Are you expecting this to be a, a separate treaty that will need to go through the normal treaty ratification processes, and how long do you anticipate that taking through the EU processes? I, I think the answer is the same. It, depend, it depends what the agreement. Uh, it depends what the agreement is. But surely you must have some estimate of this. Well, it, it, no, it depends how it's done. Well, I don't, I don't actually think these are difficult questions because there is a question about if one of the options is that this is going to have to be a self-standing, standalone treaty, which is the way it was described to us by the Home Office earlier stage in this process, then there will be a normal timetable for ratification for it to go through individual member states and so on. So the reason I'm asking this is because we want to know how much you are already planning and working backwards from whatever the end date is likely to be for a transition period, what you need to have in place and by when, and therefore when you need a security treaty agreed by in order to have everything in place by whatever the date ends up being. Is it December 2020 or whatever other date we're about to have emerge mm. from the Prime Minister's deliberations in the next couple of days? Mm. So I think we're planning, for, we're planning for a range of different scenarios, as you would expect. Um, which, uh, which do indeed work back from, uh, the, from the different, different possible dates that we're talking about, for example, around the end of any implementation period. Um, I think the, it, the time this would take depends not only on the substance of the agreement, um, but also on the form of it. So um, the government's position is set out in the paper that was published last, uh, year last September and in the summer is that there should be a specific agreement, a clear agreement on security, um, which aims as far as possible to maintain um, the current levels of capability and cooperation. The specific form that that would take and the extent to which that would be in a standalone vehicle um, or as part of a wider agreement is, is a question which cuts across the, the wider Brexit negotiating space. Um, and I don't think that, um, I, don't, I think that's, that the, the statement that there should be a clear and specific agreement on security is not to prejudge uh, questions about the particular interaction that that would have. With sure, but we're trying to get to the bottom of the, con the contingency planning here. And if yeah. you're doing proper contingency planning, I would have expected you to have an assessment of what the timetables are likely to be for different things, and therefore, what are the possible contingencies. So, given that the former Home Secretary was very clear to us that she was looking for a standalone security treaty, which we would therefore expect to go through the normal ratification for treaty processes as opposed to an Article 50 process. Now, I accept that that might change and that might be differences. However, it seems at least to be a central scenario worth planning for. In those circumstances, how long do you estimate will be needed for a treaty like that to go through the normal ratification processes? We're talking about nine months, 12 months, two years, and in which case, if Again, the central scenario and the expected deadline for the end of the transition period is December 2020. By what date do you think you need to have the security treaty agreed with the Council? And if it's not agreed by then, what are your contingency plans or what is your process for drawing up contingency plans? That's all I'm trying to get to. No, well, that's fine, Chair. Uh, what, what I'll undertake to do, because we came, we came here to talk about contingency planning for no deal. Very. Uh, 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 specifically, so I, we we had an exchange on this. I think at the last time I was here, 
what I'd like to undertake to do is to write to the committee in, in quick order to refresh uh, the responses I gave at that time to update them for uh, our, our current understanding of what's, what's been discussed with our partners in the, in the six months or so since we last spoke on that, because you know, I think the situation uh, may have evolved. So, they're entirely reasonable questions, but I'm, I'm going to need to, to give you a proper answer, going to need to come back to the committee in writing, which I mean, we will do in quick order. Okay, I am troubled because it does feel like this is important information that, first of all, you would need to be on top of for the contingency. Period, no, but the thing, the but thing is, I think what we've laid Just a second, just a second, let me finish the question. Mm. And also, Parliament will need to know the answer to this in order to be able to fully assess the consequences of whatever agreement is being put to yeah. Parliament. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand and, and, and accept that point, but I think what we've, we've been trying to labour is there are a lot of variables. Here, which make it very difficult to give the kind of crisp, concise answer that you're you're looking uh, for, and therefore I think we need to come back in, in writing to you. What we what we came here today was to talk about contingency planning for a no deal scenario. And then, what is your level of involvement in the discussions around the security treaty? We don't lead on the negotiation. We obviously link very closely with uh, Dexu colleagues. Um, um, but my priority in coming here today was to talk about our planning course, for a no deal. I'm just interested in, in your involvement as a team in the security mm -hmm. treaty negotiations. Uh, limited. 